John here with RipeWave Audio for our 2023 edition of our immersive formats, Who's Winning Video? And this is something we've done now. This will be the third year, and it's something that gets a lot of views every year. And we're tracking how the adoption is for immersive formats like Dolby Atmos, DTSX, DTSX Pro, and Oral 3D, as well as some of the other supporting formats. Of course, there is the IMAX Enhance, and then there's the Dolby Vision, which really those two formats are more around the video standards, although IMAX Enhance also incorporates a special implementation of DTSX. And as we do this, we are maintaining a database of immersive processors and receivers that are out here from popular brands. There's 29 different brands in our database, 243 models. Now, of course, over time, brands come and go. And also we see that uh, uh, models get discontinued. And sometimes that discontinuation is right on the line. We see things being removed from either the manufacturer's website or from uh, retail stores, but one or the other still shows it as active and it becomes a little tougher call of whether we actually call it formally discontinued or we continue to, to show it. One of those brands is Rotel, uh, where we cannot find any um, mention of their processors, receivers. Uh, of course, they call them powered amplifiers, not receivers, Rotel does. But we still see them for active sale with some popular retailers, and this has been going on for over a year. So these are the types of things that we're seeing. Now we're also leaving in right now the Monoprice Monolith HTP1. Now this has been an interesting story because this has been not available for sale for quite some time, and then last month I show, saw it show up as available. And then I go to do this video and I find out it's on back order again till December. So some weird things happening with the Monolith HTTP1, but we're still showing it as active. Uh, hopefully uh, Monoprice can sort all that out. So just some, some idea of how we manage this list and, and keep it up to date. But it will give you a general picture. Now whether I have one thing in the wrong category or not is less important than the overall big picture of adoption. So we see these brands, Acuras, Anthem, Arcam, et cetera, uh, 27 of these are active and 127 models cumulatively that they have that we're taking a look at for this video. So let's first look at the most popular format as far as not just adoption in the products, but as far as content out there, Dolby Atmos has by far the, the most videos, streaming content, et cetera, uh, of any other immersive format uh, out there. Now, if we look at just the processors and of receivers that are available today, many of the companies that we have, their entire portfolio of receivers and processors have Dolby Atmos capability. The exceptions that we see from Denon, from Marantz, from uh, Pioneer, from Sony, from Yamaha, uh, is because that uh, the portfolio has a few 5.1 or 7.1 uh, receivers uh, mixed into it, uh, usually under $1,000 units, that because they don't have the immersive channels, they do not put Dolby Atmos into them. But otherwise, this is pretty much 100% adoption, although if we take it um, as defined here, 90% adoption of Dolby Atmos in these receivers and processors. On one other change that we've seen is we've seen uh, Lexicon kind of drop out their models going now finally to their website. We no longer see uh, their processors of receivers, which are very similar to the RCAM and the JBL synthesis, 
uh, versions. Of course, there's also Audio Control, which is an independent company that utilizes the same uh, technology. But Lexicon is no longer showing a receiver or processor, so we've taken that out. And then in the previous videos, we also dropped out uh, Outlaw Audio uh, for no longer having an immersive processor. But this is the mix here. Now, Meridian still has a processor out there that they use for uh, home theater, surround sound utilization, but it um, hasn't adopted any of the modern for formats. I think these came out last around 2014, Meridian, and they really haven't uh, updated that product to support any of this. And yet they're still quite expensive. Let's look at DTS-X now. Also, 90% um, of the models support DTS-X. In fact, at this point, DTS-X adoption is really tracking uh, Dolby Atmos. Uh, one exception out there is uh, Theta Digital, who post on their website that DTS-X is coming in a future release, but I don't have any indication that they've ever implemented it. Uh, so if you know, let me know. Uh, I can take that asterisk out of the way. But uh, I, I'm giving them credit for it, but it's, it's really not quite known to me if, if uh, they, they have that supported. Um, likewise of with the Dolby Atmos, uh, Denon, Marantz, uh, Sony, Pioneer, uh, and, and Yamaha, the same extent they have these models that really don't support immersive channels but yet they're really still a home theater processor or actually receivers in these cases. Now let's take a look at DTS-X Pro. Now DTS-X Pro, a little later to the market, but the adoption has been very poor. We only see 19% of the models out there supporting this format that goes beyond a 7.1.4 configuration. Right off the bat, you're limited to processors and receivers that go beyond 7.1.4, and in most cases, that would claim DTSX Pro support. Uh, this leaves you with companies like Denon, JBL Synthesis, Lingdorf, Marantz, Macintosh, uh, supporting it on some of their models, and then Storm and Trinoff supporting it on all of their models. Of course, you're paying over $10,000 for those types of products, but they are fully supporting DTSX Pro on all their models. But we don't see support for DTSX Pro from any other vendor out there. So seven brands provide this and give you 24 different models. So a 19% uh, adoption rate from a model count perspective. Now, the next major format out there is Oral 3D. Now, when we did the videos last year, this was just when Oral 3D was going through bankruptcy and its future was a little uncertain. It's nice to see that actually adoption has increased since last year. The um, technology has a new ownership. Uh, they're making a go at it. Uh, we've seen new brands take this on. We have the promise from Integra, Onkyo, and Pioneer. This is why it has one with an asterisk. This summer, coming out with Oral 3D support on their latest flagship models. Now, it's just the flagship models only. Originally, they were stating that this was coming out with a June firmware release. We kept looking for it. Now they've updated their websites to say, summer of 2023. Let's hope they get that in by the end of the summer. Uh, so now we have some more options for Oral 3D, particularly at a lower price point. Now there are still some brands out there that don't support Oral 3D, Acris, Anthem, Emotiva, Iota VX, Meridian, NAD, Rotel, Sony, and Tone Winner. But otherwise, this is rounding up and catching up with adoption that we see with Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So this is 46% uh, adoption. We see 18 brands producing 58 different models. 
that have Oral 3D support today. So if you're an Oral 3D uh, fan, uh, particularly what we hear from our audience, it's the Oralmatic Up Mixer that makes you love the format and you're using this in some cases for your music content and upscaling to the immersive uh, uh, features using Oralmatic. Uh, not much Oral 3D content out there. That's not why people are running to Oral 3D. It's the Oralmatic Up Mixer. Now on to Dolby Vision. Now this is not a sound format. This is a video format. Now in our first video, we didn't actually cover Dolby Vision, but we started to add this in uh, last year and we'll continue to do so here. Right now we have an 85% adoption rate per models perspective. That's 22 brands adopting Dolby Vision, producing 108 models. And the only a few that uh, brands that aren't supporting it, Bryston uh, isn't supporting it, Meridian, NAD. Although NAD uh, could be the issue that they're just not advertising it. One of the retailers claims that they do have it. So uh, but until the vendor actually shows me proof that they have Dolby Vision, they don't get credit for it. Rotel doesn't, and Theta Digital doesn't. Then we have a couple of models from Denon and Marantz and Pioneer that don't have Dolby Vision, but these are the entry-level products uh, out there as well. IMAX Enhanced. So this is a blend of DTSX with some uh, picture uh, video enhancements per IMAX standards, and we see a um, little more than half adoption rate here. So what we've got going on now is that IMAX Enhance uh, is growing but isn't at the same adoption rate as Dolby Vision. This is something we'll continue to um, look at. We do see more brands and models picking this up since prior videos. As far as adoption of these standards, Dolby Atmos has been out since 2014. And there are some brands that picked this up early. So those that are colored in green here are within the first couple years of Dolby Atmos coming out. And then we have some late adopters like Tone Winner and IOTA VX, albeit those are new brands to the market, so I'm not going to necessarily ding them as being really late adopters here. And the, those in blue came in somewhere in between. They weren't in the first round, but more like the second round. DTS, very similar story, although DTS X came out in 2015. Those that have the star next to them were really out there on the first wave, the first adopters of this format. Uh, on, on this DTSX. DTSX Pro came in in 2019 to address uh, the extra channels which Atmos could deliver but DTSX couldn't. They'll take you beyond 7.1.4. And so since 2019, we now have 19% of the models adopting DTSX Pro, but very thin. There's only a few brands that offer it. Denon, JBL Synthesis, Lingdorf, Marantz, Macintosh, Storm Audio, and Trinoff. None of the other brands have a single model that has DTSX Pro, although we've had some announcements come out there, but later retracted from the likes of Anthem as well as Emotiva. Uh, we haven't seen anything. Although I'm interesting to see if uh, the new RMC One Plus range of products will bring that promise back of DTSX Pro. And then Oral 3D was out at the same time as Dolby Atmos in 2014. This had uh, some early adopters like Datasat, Denon, Lingdorf, Marantz, Macintosh, JBL Synthesis Storm, Theta Digital, and uh, Trinoff. And then we've seen a lot of late adopters. And this is where this surprisingly has picked up and I think it has to do with the quality of the implementation of that Oralmatic up mixer. So we had Focal coming in and Monoprice in 2019, then Arcam and Audio Control and the uh, other parts of JBL Synthesis, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 those that are 
built with their own technology coming in in 2020. And then in 2021, Yamaha coming out with uh, oral 3D support. And then finally this year with Integra, Onkyo, and Pioneer all releasing oral 3D. Now, if we look this at as a graph as a, for the brand adoption here, uh, in the current state for brands adopting, not by a product base, but by brand, 93% of the brands are supporting Dolby Atmos and DTSX today. 64% of the brands are supporting Oral 3D in some way, but only 25% DTSX Pro. Dolby Vision has 79% of the brands, and IMAX Enhance only 61%. And we can see how this has been growing over the time. Now, those numbers tick down this year because we've removed Lexicon and its models as not being active. So uh, that brand took one away from each of those columns here. So uh, this is what we look at for brand adoption. Lowest cost models. If you want to get into these uh, formats, Dolby Atmos, DTSX, you can spend as little as $350 and get an Onkyo receiver that has support for these. If you want Oral 3D, you have to spend a little bit more. The, the lowest cost receiver out there is a Denon AVR X3800H. This comes in at $1,800. So they've lowered the price point on this to, to, to make this the, the winner. I think you had to go to the $4,700. H before in the Denon line until last fall. If you want to go to the next model up, so there's nothing in between the 3800H and the Arcam AVR11 that sells for $2,400. And if you want DTSX Pro, the Denon AVR X6700H comes in at $3,000. But this is an older model. This one has this has been out there for a few years. And we're waiting for Denon to do a refresh of the 6700H. And we'll be looking at what price that comes in. Otherwise, if you want a new processor or new receiver from Denon, the AVR A1H, which happens to be their flagship and happens to sell for $6,400, that's to get DTSX Pro, if you don't like the 6700H, that's the next model up. So you have to pay $6,500 for DTSX Pro if you don't like the 6700H. And then it's up from there. If we look at these by price point, uh, under $1,000, you're not going to find anything for Oral 3D or DTSX Pro. But you're going to find 19 Dolby Atmos models and 19 DTSX models. So... Uh, 68% of what's available for under $1,000 will have Dolby Atmos or DTSX. The other percentage, the other 32%, are lower-end processors, receivers that don't support immersive formats. If you want to go, if you're willing to go between one and three thousand dollars, and I think a lot of us fit into that category. There's 30 models available with Dolby Atmos and DTSX. So 100% of what's available will have Dolby Atmos and DTSX. Only eight models that are available in this price range, or 27%, will have Oral 3D, and only one model gives you DTSX Pro at 3% of that, those models available. If you're willing to go to the next tier up, three to $5,000, you're going to find 20 models that support Atmos and DTSX, or 95% of what's out there. You'll find 12 models that have Oral 3D support, or 57%, and only two models with DTSX Pro, or 14% of what's available at this price point. A smaller percentage of this community will go above $5,000, up to ten. dollars You'll find yet again 20 models that have Dolby Atmos and DTSX. That's 100% of what's available at this price range. Only 14 models, but still 70% of what's available 
in this price range that have Oral 3D. So as you go up in price, it's more likely you'll find Oral 3D. Yet you're only finding four models with DTSX Pro, or 20%. And if you're willing to spend over $10,000, which is a really small percentage of our audience, 18 models have Dolby Atmos, 17 models have DTSX, 16 models have Oral 3D. Now, why isn't it the full 100%? Well, there's still some really high-end stuff from Meridian, and, and Bryston has the SP3 that's still available, that aren't immersive or processors that don't support all these channels. And that's what's bringing those numbers down. But otherwise, you almost see those three in every single model above $10,000. DTSX Pro is only in just more than half at only 11 models. So even if you're willing to spend money, it's no guarantee that you're going to get all the formats. But what models do support all of them? And what we found is the lowest cost product that's going to support all of this is the Denon AVR X6700 at $3,000, have all these formats, as well as their X8500 HA and their A1H. So only one of those is a brand new product, which is the A1H, but it's $6,500. Marantz, everything here, again, is older product except for the flagship, the AV10, which is $7,000. But the cheapest Marantz you can buy is the SR8015 at $4,000 that checks all the boxes. Macintosh checks all the boxes with their MX123 8K at $9,000. And Storm and Trinoff also do this with their product ranges. Of course, you're going to spend over $12,000 for those. Let's say if we removed at least one checkbox. So we either remove DTSX Pro or IMAX Enhance or Dolby Vision. How does that list grow? So we can add these additional models to the list if you don't care about DTSX Pro. And I don't think a lot of people do care about it. I don't hear a lot of talk about this format. Uh, the Denon 3800 and up. The Arcam AVR11 and up. The Marantz Cinema 50 and up. The Onkyo TXRZ70 and up the Pioneer VSX LX805 and the Integra DX, DRX 8.4, essentially their flagships from Onkyo Pioneer and Integra that are just getting released this summer. And Audio Control, the Concert XR4 and up, the JBL Synthesis SDP55 and SDR35 and up, Lingdorf MP60 2.1, the Macintosh MX180, and the JBL Synthesis SDP75 and up all give you everything minus a checkbox. But if we look at the first group here, every, uh, it's just getting rid of DTSX Pro. The Lingdorf MP60 2.1 and the Macintosh MX180 you're just giving up IMAX Enhance. And with the JBL Synthesis SDP75, you're just giving up Dolby Vision. And that sums it up. What is your thoughts here? Um, is this evolving the way you would think it would be happening? Uh, do you have any strong feelings about DTSX Pro, which really hasn't had any uh, strong adoption as of the moment? And are you excited to see Oral 3D continue? That feedback would be useful to the RightWave Audio community. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to take your involvement to the next level, consider going to our Patreon site at www.patreon.com slash RightWave. Uh, you can always still hit the one-time uh, thanks button. So if you hit the thanks, you can do a one-time donation. And be sure to hit that bell notification so you're informed when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.